Hello, so uh, sorry it's been a while since I posted a video here. Uh, I came down with pneumonia over the last, uh, about the last month, and uh, about three weeks of it was pretty bad. Uh, so I really didn't get a chance to work on any of the outside stuff like the drill press or anything. Um, hopefully I'll start working on that uh, the next few weeks here. Um, so I've pretty much only been working on stuff indoors uh, since it's pretty cold out here in Illinois. Still, it's warming up a bit, but uh, still pretty cold. Um, so. While I was kind of sick, I was thinking about a lot of the vacuum tubes I have, and uh, I was kind of reading up on some simple guitar amplifier circuits, and I came across the Fender Champ amplifier, and uh, it was their simplest circuit they ever made for any of their amplifiers, uh, vacuum tube circuit, and it's extremely simple vacuum tube circuit. I'm not a my much of an electronics guy, but I mean, I mean, even I'm able to understand the whole thing, so it's it's very simple. Um, so it's a nice small little chassis, nice small amplifier. It's uh, five watts. Um, I started playing guitar again recently. I'm still kind of teaching myself and trying to get better, but uh, I've always wanted to have a vacuum tube amplifier. I just have a cheap little transistor one right now. So uh, this was kind of my idea of uh, getting into some vacuum tube amplifiers. Uh, I'm sure I'll get some nicer, more expensive ones that are commercially made, but I think it'd be kind of a fun little project to make one myself. So this is a clone of a Fender uh, 5F1 chassis, which is from about the 1950s uh, Fender Champ amplifier, like I said before. Um, I decided to make this because I already had all the most expensive parts lying around. I already had power transformer, um, and this is, I got it at a ham radio festival uh, for three dollars or something like that. Uh, you know, if I were to buy a, this kind of thing for, for an amplifier for like Fender, uh, you know, it'd probably be like 60 or 80 dollars. So uh, I already had the most expensive part just sitting around and, uh, you know, what are the odds? It happens to be the exact right specifications. So uh, it was just kind of a nice thing to be able to try and make it. And I also had two of the three vacuum tubes uh, so about forty or fifty dollars worth of vacuum tubes, um, and then I had a bunch of generic, you know, just random parts also. So I ended up having to buy uh, most of the little just odds and ends and bits and pieces here and there. I had to buy the audio transformer um, tube sockets. I had to buy one of the vacuum tubes and then just a bunch of little hardware bits. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going pretty good. Also, uh, you you can you can buy these as kits online, and uh, you can buy the ch actual metal chassis online too. Uh, but the chassis seems to run about seventy dollars or so, because it's it's nice. It's like a chrome plated, screen printed chassis. But that was a bit out of my price range for kind of wanting to just make something over you know a nice little project. It's you know I don't want the, I don't want this thing to be a perfect, you know perfect replica of a you know a champ amplifier. I kind of make it <clears throat> my own and. Uh, just kind of make it for as cheaply as possible. So I went over to Menards and I bought just a piece of uh, sheet metal, just a piece of weldable iron and uh, weldable, uh, you know, steel sheet metal. And so I, I decided to make this chassis myself, which turned out to be kind of more of a pain than it was really worth. Uh, I don't own a press brake, so I had to bend these all in a vise, all the bends in a vise. Um, and it had to do quite a bit of hammering, which I didn't really want to do. You don't want to do head a lot of hammering on stuff like this, but um, it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And it's only this top part is going to be seen, so it's, you know, it's totally fine. And it's very, very, very sturdy. It's, uh, I welded it all together, so it's, uh, it's nice and strong. Uh, it was a real pain to lay out where all these holes go, though. It took a lot of trial and error, and uh, I have way too many hours invested in making this chassis, so I probably would not do that again. I wouldn't re re recommend it necessarily. It's a kind of overkill for something you can spend, you know, $70 online and get the, get the first time, so. Um, but it's, you know, good on my own now, and it's uh, it looks pretty good. It's, I put some nice uh, brown um, hammered finish paint on it, kind of hide the blemishes from it, and uh, yeah, it's pretty good. So, um, you know, I'll probably explain, I'm gonna explain this circuit a little bit here, um, in a cutaway, uh, but yeah, I'm hoping to, uh, have my brother over tonight and actually assemble this, put the guts in here, solder everything together, 
and uh, you know, fingers crossed, hopefully I should have a working tube amplifier sometime this late this evening. So we'll see if that actually works. Um, hopefully there won't be any problems to have to diagnose. Uh, that'd be kind of difficult, but um, yeah, it should be fun. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So one of the first things I did when I started this project was to test out the tubes that I have in stock here. And I happen to have a 5Y3 GT, I happen to have a couple of them, and then I happen to have two 12AX7s. So we'll go ahead and plug the 5Y3 GT in here, I've already got it set up for it, and I'll turn that on. And that just takes a moment for it to become uh, fully active because it's uh, it's got directly heated cathodes, so it just takes a just a very short amount of time. So I can go ahead and test that now, and it tests as good. And that's only testing one of the diodes, there's actually two. So what I'll have to do here, turn that off, and go back to the other selector here, and I'll turn that on again, and I'll test the other diode. So let's go make sure both work inside there. Only takes a second to warm up, and that one's also good. So that, uh, was it the 5Y, uh, 5Y3 GT, that one's good. So I can use that one. I'll go ahead and get up, get set up for the 12AX7s here. Okay, so I've got this all set up to test the first triode in this tube, the 12AX7. There's actually two triodes in here, so we have to test them both separately. Give that a second to heat up here. And that one tests good. We'll turn this off and we'll switch it up to test the other triode. Let that heat up for just a second. And that triode tests good also. So uh, this 12AX7 is also acceptable to use in the amplifier, so I'll set that aside for it. So this is the schematic for the amplifier I'm building here. Um, I thought I'd just go over this real quick and how this all works. So, coming in, we just have the, you know, the power supply from the wall uh, that goes through the switch, to turn it on, and then has a two amp fuse uh, just for protection. There, in the original, in the original version, there is a safety capacitor here, but not, this won't be installed in mine because I'll just have an actual grounded plug. So that goes out. Uh, let's see, we got uh, five volts comes out, and that's for the filament for the. 5Y3 GT, um, 6.3 volts comes out, and that's for the filaments for the 12AX7, the 6V6 GT, and then the pilot light. And then uh, 320 volts comes out, uh, center tapped on either side, uh, to be rectified in the 5Y3 GT. So we have about 320 volts DC coming in here, it goes into this first capacitor, and then uh, that goes up and goes through the the audio output transformer and into the plate of the 6V6 GT. It goes down through a step down resistor here. I think it's about 300 or 280 volts at this point into this other, this other filter capacitor. And that provides the voltage for the suppressor screen, uh, the, suppre the suppressor grid for the 6V6 GT. That goes down through again through another uh, step down voltage resistor here. And here's the final uh, filter capacitor, and this provides the plate voltage for both of the triodes of the 12AX7. It's, uh, it's one vacuum tube, but has two identical triodes inside. And so that's pretty much all the power supply works. Uh, the way the actual signal amplification works is you plug your guitar in one of these two, um, one of these two jacks here. One of them has an extra one meg resistor uh, to quiet it down, so you have a loud and a quiet side. Uh, I believe that's mostly just so you can uh, play with the gain while not getting too much volume. So you could plug it into like the low side, uh, drive up the gain, uh, like as if you were playing it really loud, but you don't have to play it loud. Uh, so you get nice distortion that way at lower volumes. I, I think that's what they use it for. So the input signal, really, really small voltage comes in from the guitar, goes into the first triode of the 12AX7, gets amplified comes out is uh, decoupled, AC decoupled with this decoupling capacitor because this is at uh, 270 volts. Gets decoupled, goes into the volume control knob, and then that goes into the grid of this second triode of the 12AX7. That gets amplified again, and then 
we go over AC decoupled and then goes into the grid of the 6v6 GT. And then the uh, gets ample, actually power amplified, 5 watts, goes into the uh, output transformer and into the speaker. And then we have a negative feedback circuit here, which uh, I believe it helps reduce distortion. And I guess something that uh, a lot of people do, and I might do this also, is um, install a switch here to deactivate this, and that allows the amplifier to become louder and more distorted. And so uh, if you're in it, it's like kind of distortion, high gain kind of guitar sounds, then uh, I guess that's a good way to go. So I might do that. I might experiment with that. I'm not quite sure yet. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, though. It's a really simple circuit. It just comes in, gets amplified a little bit, amplified a little bit more, and then goes through this big power amplifier, turns into 5 watts, goes through this uh, output transformer to turn the high impedance uh, into low impedance. I have a nice 8 ohm impedance uh, speaker that this will be driving. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed, once this is all solder soldered together, it should work pretty nice and hopefully sound pretty good. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So after finally assembling this and uh, running through a bunch of tests, I just plugged in my guitar and we have amplification, so I'm very happy right now. I've got a temporary bleed resistor in here to drain down the B positive because it's, uh, with the tubes in it runs at about uh, 370 volts or so. Um, so that would give me quite a shock if I was rooting around in there. So uh, I'm going to take that off now and uh, just kind of see how it sounds and kind of play guitar for a bit. So yeah, this is really exciting. I'm happy, with, happy that it's actually working. So this is the completed amplifier. Uh, I got the power transformer on top, the output transformer. There's a, a slightly attenuated input here and then the normal input here. The on off plus the volume the little indicator light and the fuse. And in the back we have the uh, 5x3 GT, which is the rectifier tube, uh, the power tube, which is the 6v6 GT, and then 12AX7 is inside this little uh, protective cap here. And then you have the output for the speaker itself. So <clears throat> it turned out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Uh, here's the insides here. I got the filter capacitors. Uh, this is the B positive rail up here. And uh, uh, it's, it's pretty pretty good. It's a little, little, little tight to build this thing. It was, it was kind of difficult to wire it, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm real happy with it. It look, looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, get the speaker plugged in here and uh, kind of get, show you kind of how it sounds. So we'll have a look here. One of the nice things about this amplifier is that uh, it's only 5 watts, so if you crank it up all the way, you can get quite a lot of overdrive uh, without, you know, being too incredibly loud. So this is what it sounds like with uh, as much gain as possible on the, on the tubes there, and just a whole bunch of overdrive. So I know this amplifier is supposed to be 5 watts. But I thought it'd be interesting to see what the actual power output is. So the way I'm going to test that is I have an uh, audio generator here, and that's outputting a 
it's a sine wave that's uh, 400 hertz and it's uh, a tenth of a volt. And then I'll simulate um, an actual guitar being hooked up to it without me having to str strum strings. And it'll be a little more precise because uh, there won't be any noise there to really uh, see in the in there. So th <laughs> there is a problem with this, and that's that this audio generator is pretty broken right now. Um, I don't know exactly what's wrong with it, but uh, if you give you, I'll turn to the volume here. So it wavers uh, quite a bit there, so I think there's something wrong with the power supply uh, or something. So I'm going to sort that out, but uh, you'll just have to imagine that this is um, a perfect 400 hertz tone uh, for the time being. But uh, this should be fine for this test anyways, so um, I'll go ahead and get this uh, actually set up for the test here right now. Okay, so I'm all set up to test what the actual uh, output voltage is here. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is if, uh, I've actually disconnected the speaker, and in its place I've put a, a high power uh, 8 ohm resistor, and that'll just uh, that'll just take place of the speaker, so I don't have to actually listen to really loud uh, tones here. Um, so I've just hooked uh, the output into this resistor, and then across that I have another input into my oscilloscope here. And so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, bring up close to the oscilloscope, and we'll, we'll see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm showing the scope here, and uh, what I'm currently showing is that original input uh, input voltage there, which is just a tenth of a volt. So I'll go ahead and flip over to the output, and uh, I'll turn the volume up here, and we'll see what we're at. So let me turn down the scale here a bit. And... And that is the... Highest, uh, that's the volume, with the volume up all the way, and that looks like it's about, that's at the 5 volts per division, so 5, 10, 15, uh, almost 20, it looks like uh, 17 or, about 17 or 18 volts. Um, so I'll make note of that, and uh, I'll do the calculation here in a second to see what the actual output power is. One thing to note here is that uh, you can actually see the distortion caused by the overdrive. Um, if I, as I turn it up, you can see that it's um, it's nice and smooth across uh, the tops and bottoms here. Uh, but if I go past uh, up into where it overdrives, you can see that it kind of flattens out a bit and it gets a little distorted. Uh, so that's what that's what the overdrive actually looks like in the oscilloscope here. Okay, so let's take that 18 volts peak to peak. If we divide that by two, we get nine volts, which is just the peak voltage. We take that 9 volts and multiply it by 0 0.707, we get 6.4 volts, which is the root mean square voltage, or RMS voltage. Now we, if we take that 6.4 volts, uh, square it, multiply it by cosine of 0, and then divide it by 8 ohms, which is uh, what the speaker impedance is, we get 5.1 watts. So uh, we're right on target with uh, where we thought we'd be. And, uh, that's what we that's what I expected here and uh yeah it's it's kind of exciting to know that uh it's outputting the proper amount of power which is great. So that's it for this uh guitar amplifier project for now. Um I do plan on making a tweed covered case for this in an upcoming video. Um that'll probably be a few weeks or months from now. I'm not quite sure when I'll actually get around to doing that, but uh when I do I plan to use this uh torque amplifier uh old metal decal that I got a long time ago. Uh, I think it's from a tractor, I guess, um, but uh, that's kind of the nickname for this thing is the torque amplifier. So uh, yeah, hope, uh, hopefully you'll be able to watch that in an upcoming video at some point, uh, me building the case for this and finishing it up. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, until then, uh, thanks for watching the video.